welcome to Unicon's open source support briefing for Open Aquella for the Q3 of 2019. For our agenda today, we'll be covering some community news. We'll talk about the latest releases of Open Aquella. We'll look at um, we'll look at what Unicon has done in terms of sustaining engineering um, and contributing back to the community. We'll look ahead what the community is um, aiming for for the next release of Open Aquella in December. Talk about some upcoming events and then we'll open it up for any um, questions that folks may have. A little bit about myself. My name is Chris Beach. I am the Unicon Open Aquella tech lead and more generally a software developer, uh, primarily focused on open source developments here at Unicon. So there's three community groups uh, that we track. Um, the first one is the community developer meeting. It meets on the first Friday of every month um, Australia time, right? So sometimes that means it's on the last day of the month in the US. Um, the, it's really open to anyone that has an interest in developing for Open Aquila, okay? Whether that's a little bit or a major component, um, anyone's welcome to join. So our agenda and the meetings, uh, meeting minutes are out on the wiki. Um, with the link here, uh, these slides will be shared out, um, and so you'll be, have access to all these links um, after the briefing. Um, so if, um, if you don't have permissions to add to the agenda, feel free to send a note out to the user, um, Equally user dev group, and we'll be able to add those for you. Uh, we've been we've been focused on talking about. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and mute um, that person. Uh, we've been focused on talking about code management, right? How do the repositories look? Uh, forking model, committership, um, those kind of things. Uh, we've also been talking about the bleeding edge uh, features and fixes as they're coming into the code, um, and you know what tech debt they might be incurring, and also how can we be removing some tech debt. Um, we also have a new project space, uh, so we have created the Open Aquila project on GitHub. It's still owned by Aperio um, with all the trademarks that happened with uh, the open sourcing effort a few years ago. Um, it just has a new home to better facilitate uh, management of the community. So if you are interested in attending, um, feel free to join us. Our, um, our next call will be this evening, and there's details out um, or if there's not, there'll be details out shortly on the dev list. The next group uh, that we track is the, is the security group for Open Aquella. Uh, we've been working on a security process uh, that will be made public. Uh, we're aiming by mid-October. And what this will allow folks to do is if they have a security concern, they can either work with their, you know, commercial services providers such as Unicon or Edelax, um, and we can, you know, we can route that appropriately and, and work with you on it. Um, but you can also send, uh, without any sort of a, you know, a financial commitment, you can just send a, an email with a security concern to the uh, security at aperio.org alias, and then we have folks from the security group watching that, and we'll be able to the field it and the security process will tell uh, will explain a little more detail um, what um, what the responsibility of the security group is it is not necessarily to fix security issues but it's to provide guidance for that right um, and so as that security process comes out and um, and folks were to add um, or you know bring up concerns with security um, we'll we'll continue to revise that process the other thing that we've been working on is dependency security reviews. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to secure an application, um, but one of the ways is to make sure that all of your dependencies and transitive dependencies are up to date. Um, and so there's been other efforts to create these reviews, uh, but the security group has been um, has been looking at them and making sh and kind of vetting them, making sure it makes sense and we're going in an appropriate direction. The last community group that we track is the advisory boards. This is kind of the, the administrative um, group, um, and it's been uh, guiding these major decisions that have been taking place in the community developer group and also in the security group. 
Um, and, and then as another effort, we've been reviewing and formalizing community guidelines. So the community is now a couple years old, um, at least the open source part of the community, right? Um, and it's, um, and we've identified some changes to the guidelines that would um, make the community run smoother. And so we're looking at um, revising those guidelines and then posting them. So moving on, the kind of the main events um, for, um, from that we saw in Open Aquella over the summer was Open Aperio 2019. Um, we had a workshop and then several presentations that talked about Open Aquella um, from multiple presenters, which was kind of cool to see. Uh, there was a workshop that we just introduced folks to Open Aquella. Just get it up and running on your system, uh, you know, get into the UI, play around with it a little bit. So hopefully they could take it back to um, their, uh, their groups and, and start playing with it a bit. We had a mini Faces of Open Aquella presentation where we had Edelax, Unicon, and then California College of the Arts come together and talk about just some, some interesting things that have been done with Open Aquella. We had a, um, a presentation on integrating Open Aquella with another Aperio application called uPortal. And, um, and that was a very insightful conversation um, that I'll talk about in just a moment. But, uh, you know, just, just the idea of integrating Open Aquella with, um, with the wider Aperio community. Talked about the, a presentation on the state of Open Aquella, where are we at, where are we going, and just allowed people a forum to, to ask questions as needed. And then um, there was a presentation on cloud providers. Uh, Dan McFadden from Adelax traveled all the way up from Australia to join us, um, and he was able to explain this new feature that Adelax has been working on that they put into the community version of Open Aquella that allows um, an extensible platform to bring in other cloud functionality. And we'll see a, um, a demo of that shortly um, for, a, for an actual example. Going back to integrations, uh, this is, um, you know, as I, as I pondered what Open Aperio this year kind of meant to Open Aquella and to the wider communities, um, integrations really came out as a theme um, in my mind. So in order to drive adoption, right, in order to make um, Open Aquella be that hub of content that, um, that it can be, right, and it can do it really well, you need to be able to integrate it. If you had it in its own little silo, yes, it's useful, but um, you're, you're kind of missing the vision of Open Aquella. Uh, and so creating um, concepts of how we can integrate is great and useful, um, but creating concrete examples of integrations has a lot more value add. Even if they're maybe more straightforward or basic examples, the proof of concept is there. And so Open Aquila and U Portal has been able to integrate um, and, and really it was nothing special, right? But it was just a matter of, um, of taking what both does well, right? Open Aquila does really well in the presentation layer. Open, or I'm sorry, U Portal does really well in the presentation layer. Open Aquila does great at content management. And you just connected those two um, essentially with, um, you know, you could view it as like an open educational resource. And, and we were able to see that integration come to life. Um, and so what I'd like the community to be thinking about is what other integrations are out there. It doesn't have to be necessarily an Aperio application, um, be cool if it is, but how can, we, how can we expose these integrations to show a higher value add for, for this content management system? Over the summer, uh, 2019.1 was released, and then just as we were getting into autumn, 2019.1.1 was released. Um, some of the highlights, you can see all of the feature lists and look at all the issue tickets that um, made, uh, made these releases um, on, the, on the repository, but we'll highlight some of them here. The admin console has now been turned into a standalone launcher, which allows you to run it through OpenJDK. Um, and this allows you to not have to use Oracle, Java, and you know, Java Web Start to use uh, Open Aquella as soon as you upgrade to at least 2019.1. Um, 
Um, we're not providing legal advice here, but please consider how you're using the Oracle um, technology and if you're in compliance with the license. So it's, it, would, it has changed um, earlier this year, um, late last year, earlier this year. And so the, the community wanted to create the ability to not have to force adopters to use, um, to get an Oracle license essentially to use an open source platform. Uh, cloud providers we talked a little bit about and we'll see a demo on, but that's in 2019.1. Uh, the proof of concept for the Blackboard LTI REST integration is now available for folks to take a look at. Consider it like a beta version. Um, not really ready for production, but it is there enough that you can take it for a spin and see if there's um, anything that you um, need to you would need to change or add um, besides what's in the tickets and what's on the roadmap in order for it to be a, um, a viable feature for you um, when, it's, when it's gonna be time to use it. Uh, a pre-login notice editor has now been developed uh, in the community um, and it is exactly what it sounds like. So before you log in, you're able to see now rich text uh, to create a better user experience. The Lucene indexing engine, um, as now um, the configuration has now been exposed to apply a, a configuration to support a different language instead of English for, um, for the indexing, right? You could always add multiple languages to Aquella and different contribution languages, but this will actually take how Lucene um, parses and analyzes your, um, your text and how it applies stemming and wildcards and whatnot. Um, to a specific language, um, and it does not have to be English anymore. Uh, we wanted to call it just the enhanced uh, naming scheme. So we started out with, uh, you know, the major version of Aquella, and then a QA, and then that QA number that just kind of revved up. Uh, we then moved to a, a yearly revision. So the first one was 2018.2, so it was our second release in 2018. We're keeping with that, but we're also going to add a, um, a hot fix um, revision number at the end. So we released 2019.1 um, mid-summer, and then we had a hot fix come out in, in September, so it's 2019.1.1. And really, the the idea of hot fixes is it's just going to be bug fixes. Um, it can it can have feature fixes as long as they are kind of backwards compatible, because when you're in a um, kind of a release branch, if you will, right, everything that's under 2019.1, you should be able to upgrade to a hot fix and then back level to even that earliest version of 2019.1 without fear of breaking something with like a database migration or whatnot um, and so it'll be bug fixes and light features if um, if someone in the community found it necessary to to put that in so let's go ahead right now um, and and just do a quick demo of some of these features the the how we launch the admin console now cloud providers and then what the pre-log and notice editor looks like and so here this is on on our demo site, it's using the new UI. As you can see, it looks you know it looks quite a bit different than the um, the legacy UI. And we've configured a this pre-login notice here. Okay, so it's really just rich HTML. Um, you can kind of put whatever you want there. Go ahead and log in. Okay. To get to that pre-login notice editor, go under general, below login, we now have this, or we have the login notice editor. We still have the ability to add a notice that's a, that modal pop-up dialog that once you log in successfully, you'll be presented with and you can say, you know, I, I accept or, you know, uh, don't want to accept some terms and conditions or just a notice or what have you. Uh, but now we have the ability through a tiny MCE as an editor to go ahead and put some text out to the user pre-log in, right? So you can, this is pulling from a YouTube, but you could also pull from an, uh, a resource or a picture or a video inside of your open Aquella install that, um, that is um, 
that you don't have to authenticate to view and you'll be able to um, make it a more rich experience for your users. There's also the ability to kind of schedule when you would um, want this pre-login notice. So if there's some maintenance window that's coming in or whatnot, um, you could apply that. So let's go and take a look then at cloud providers. So under integrations, cloud providers, what you need is the URL and then you will need a username and password. Um, let's step back a minute and talk about what cloud providers really are. Um, it is the ability for a, a separate party, right? Someone who is not developing Open Aquila core code to be able to enhance the functionality of Open Aquila um, in a more cloud-centric manner. Um, so Edelax developed this feature um, and then they, uh, they created a, a service around it, right? Um, since they're using the cloud, it costs to, to actually use the, the features of this cloud service that they created. Um, and so they, they created this thing that will allow you to send your attachments to the um, to their cloud service, and then they use, I believe it's Google, to, to inspect the attachments and to provide recommendations on what you could tag that asset with. And then this, this, um, this auto tag cloud provider will then funnel back those tag possibilities to open Aquila, and then you can then do whatever you want with them, right? Add them to your metadata, script it, however you need to do. Uh, so we have added this cloud provider, and then if we go and contribute an item, right, and we'll go ahead and we will add a picture. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this, this picture of a mountain reflection. And so the widget that was based on, um, that was developed uh, specifically for um, this cloud provider was able to the, recognize there was an attachment uploaded, sent it off to the Edelex Content Services cloud provider. It did its, its, um, um, its computations, right, to figure out what tags should be recommended, and then it brought it back. And based on a configuration, it said, which, which should we suggest you use, right? And so if we look at this picture a little bit, all right, take a look at that. We have the mountain landscapes. There's a reflection in it. And then we look at what the tags showed. Glacial landform, it found Lake McDonald. Um, there's mountain range and even got a reflection in there. So kind of cool that it was able to pull that out, right? And this is, a, this is kind of a brand new feature of Open Aquila. You could have scripted this, but it would have been a lot of effort and it would have been a lot of customization. Um, and then you'd also have to come up with the actual cloud provider service to pull out these tags. I'll finish talking about the, um, the cloud providers, but I wanted to show the, um, uh, how you launch the admin console now. So let me pull that up here. So the admin console, uh, when you download it now, it's no longer a link inside of the Open Aquila UI that you have to be logged into and then you um, you download it and it'll just, it'll just come up like normal or like it has um, been in the past. What you do is you download this package that's been pre-built for a given OS because it packages um, a Java distribution with it and has um, specific launcher code in there for a given OS. You go ahead and start up that application and you're presented with this launcher that will save, you know, if you are working with a couple different Aquila install or open Aquila installs, maybe your test or your prod servers, um, and you're able to kind of save that in here. We'll go ahead and launch that. Now, since I launched from my local desktop, I did not launch it from the browser. I have to log in again. And this is just like you would log in at the normal UI. Okay. And then what's presented is the admin console that everyone knows, 
Okay, so the functionality up to this point was changed, how you get into the admin console, but the rest of the admin console behaves the same. So going back to cloud providers, once you um, configure a cloud provider, it then enables you to add a widget based on that cloud provider. So we go into our wizard, let's say if we wanted to create a page in our contribution form, and you can see that we have this ECS auto tag widget that if we wanted to, it now just shows up automatically just by virtue that you added um, the auto tag as a cloud provider. If we generalize what cloud providers mean for us, then we take a step back, right? Um, Edelex Content Services created a specific example, but the technology, the APIs used, it's just part of Open Aquella and, um, and that is open source. And so folks are now enabled to create their own cloud providers, right? Um, maybe something very specific to their institution or something that they want to, they see some, another cool feature out there um, that they would like to see Open Aquella do with content, right? And you can now um, create that cloud provider um, using the APIs and it will be able to talk to Open Aquella. You can essentially just plug it in and really any Open Aquella will be able to make use of it now. All right, so let's go back to the slide deck. Get full screen again, there we go. Moving on to our what we've done with sustaining engineering or consulting hours in these last two quarters. Uh, we talked about it or we're aligning with Aperio more. Um, there's, you know, with any effort like open sourcing an application, there'll be lessons learned. Um, and part of it was, you know, we're not, uh, oh, uh, Perio isn't licensed to use the word Aquella anywhere, right? It has to be open Aquella. And so we're, we're working to remove all those references. A large majority has been done, but the base repository was still saying it was Aquella. And so we moved it into the Aperio repository, recognized that there was some lesson, well, we, there was some lessons learned there. And to more, um, to create a more flexible um, community um, and uh, have a higher degree of control and administrative, um, uh, to be able to administrate the, re the repositories better, we actually ended up moving it to the Open Aquella GitHub project. Um, it is still owned by Aperio, it is still trademarked through them and all the, the rules, regulations, and then the benefits that come with that, but it's just now in its, um, in its own GitHub project. We've also uh, helped to, uh, we revised the Docker image to use OpenJDK. Idea being, we don't want to force people to have to pay for an Oracle license to use open source software. That just, that does, it's not consistent. Um, and so uh, movement was made there. Uh, we talked a little bit with the, um, that the security group was looking at the, um, the dependency security review processes um, and we created that process um, and then um, brought it to the security group uh, to vet it, make sure that the community, like more of a community-wide effort was in place to say, this is what we want, this would be helpful, um, but just the processing, the tooling behind it, identifying what would be helpful, um, we, we needed to develop. I just wanted to give a shout out to the Open Aquila Sync effort. Um, it is in progress, but other priorities have taken um, taken precedence right now. But it is still there. Um, some legal issues were uh, confirmed or worked out, and so the the road is open for it. It's just it's just a matter of getting the the time and the priority to do that. And in terms of Blackboard integration, there was two efforts that was worked on. Uh, the building block and web service, uh, a new version was released. There was an issue with the, um, uh, when you integrate with a student information system in Blackboard, it was sending the wrong uh, user identifier. Um, and so that's now been updated. And then there was some work done on the LTI REST um, integration that we'll talk about in a minute. The other effort that we've been working on fairly he heavily is um, is attachment health, and we'll talk about what that means in a f in a few slides. 
As a reminder for any adopter that is using Blackboard or that's looking to use Blackboard, um, the last year, late last year, the building block broke due to code updates on the Blackboard side. Um, after investigating it, it really wasn't Blackboard's fault. Uh, the building block um, uses private APIs that, um, that were changed, right? And they were private, so you know it's Blackboard's discretion if they want to change those or not. Um, the effort was fixed in Q1, or the, the building block in web service was fixed in Q1, and then uh, we just revved it to, um, to get that, that extra enhancement with the student information system integration. Um, but it allows you to pull to LMS and push to LMS like you would normally. Um, and this should work for you know about the next half a year. Blackboard has said that sometime in Q2 of 2020, they're turning off um, the, the SOAP web services uh, functionality in Blackboard SaaS and any self or managed hosted Blackboard that's, um, that's up to that code level. Um, and at that point, you won't be able to use the current Open Aquila integration. So the, the LTI REST integration is the future, right? If you are using Blackboard or looking to, you really need to be focused on, are we prepared for this, okay? And so that's why the, the push for getting a proof of concept was in 2019.1. Um, so we encourage folks to take that for a spin, see, um, see if there's any concerns and make sure it's, um, it's working. Um, and then there's more advanced features, bug fixes, and whatnot that we're aiming for in um, in the release in December 2019.2. Since this has so far been mostly a sustaining engineering effort, um, it had to be prioritized with the other efforts. And the attachment health um, effort is is taking priority right now. So if if you are if you are needing this and you have funds available, resources available, please reach out and, and we can talk about um, setting aside resources, budgets, and whatnot to make it a reality in 2019.2. I'm not saying yet that it's not going to be there. It's just, um, you know, there's, there's just a yellow flag in my mind that there's, there's high priorities that we're looking at and, and this might start getting pushed to the back burner a little bit. Um, but we are, we're doing our best to, to do what we can on that. In terms of attachment health, um, there have been reports in the past of attachments going missing in Open Aquila, which is not cool for a content management system. Um, there's several reasons why this might happen. There's been root cause analysis done. Sometimes it was able to be fixed. Other times, you know, it was, it was enough of a black box that we didn't really know why. We as a community, right, the people we've talked to about this, um, we didn't know really why it was happening. Um, so we, we've had a, a more concerted effort to, um, to resolve this issue, right? Um, there's been um, a strong correlation with the remove staging area tasks and attachments going missing. And so when you turn that off, you're able to do that, you know, attachments stop going missing. So that's one possible root cause. Um, but there are other ones. One of those is not a Quella, open Aquila's you know, issue at all. It was just a script that was written um, that added attachment metadata, but never actually added the attachment or it didn't get uploaded correctly through the scripting um, interface. And, and open Aquella rightly just you know, did what the script told it to. Um, in terms of a path forward, right? We don't want this to be, we, wanna, we want to be upfront right, that this is an issue that we're actively working on, we're, we're watching it, we're working to guide it, um, but we don't want it to scare folks, okay. We have, um, we have the opportunity to use code from Aquella's Pearson days. There was a, a script written called Ping Aquella um, that, that, that essentially acts as a monitor for all of your files, uh, your attachment files. And so we took that, it was open source, but we took that, we rolled it into the um, this suite of scripts known as the Open Aquila Toolbox. It's a great old build and has unit tests around it uh, to be a little bit more manageable. We added some enhancements to it and it's now can be used um, right now for any Open Aquila install as, your, um, as a monitoring device, okay? And we'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide on, on how to do that. We want to create a configuration to turn off remove state 
packaging areas. So if that is an issue for your um, install, if that is something you just want to see, right? You've noticed that attachments are going missing and you want to check it out. Currently, you have to um, kind of hack your Open Aquila install, which is not hard to do, but it would be good to have a configuration for that. We are looking to set up better attachment audit trail logging messages so you can see what happened to an attachment at each part of its life cycle, including Open Aquila decided to delete it for some reason, right? Or we just stopped getting mention of this one, and so maybe it was a file system issue, right? That's possible too. We're looking at having a, a rubbish bin, right? So Open Aquila never really deletes anything. So when you purge an item, all of that content would get moved into the rubbish bin with a kind of an audit log um, text file to say this is why it got put into the rubbish bin and then it just leaves it alone. So if you do notice that you have missing attachments, you can go back there and it's a higher likelihood that you'll be able to recover it. And really all of these efforts is to help us, um, us as a community, anyone who's experiencing this, to just determine and then ultimately resolve the root causes. Um, there has been issues in the past with missing attachments. They've been resolved and that's great. And we wanna just get to that point with um, the current concerns with these missing attachments. To do that really the first step is for adopters to take a look at running check files. It will check all of your attachments on all of your items and all your institutions for a given um, Open Aquila install. Um, it's only going to look at um, what I what I term as first order attachments. The attachments have to be tracked in the database um, so it can actually so the the utility script can say um, you know what should be in the file store. So if you unzip a file in Open Aquila and you only attach you know five percent of the files in that zip to the item XML you're only going to have check files be able to, to look at those 5% of um, attachments. Okay, so just note that it's not truly exhaustive, it's exhaustive in terms of what it can find in the database. There are filters available, so you can go by institution or go by collection. So when you initially run this thing, it's recommended to do one collection, ideally a small one, and then you can start building out making sure that you know we haven't seen really major performance issues using this tool um, but you know on your production system it's always good to be cautious it's a it's a jar it's a java jar um, it should be fairly lightweight to run it runs on the server and you need to give it access to your file store and a read-only user to the database um, it doesn't try to make any changes to the database but just good practice don't give it something that it can actually change the database in terms of configuration, uh, when you look at the link that's down below the README, um, Open Aquila does encoding on the, on the file's attachment name, um, and it's different for a given Aquila install, right? So uh, Linux users on AWS will see something different than Windows users self-hosted necessarily. And so the tool was um, set up to allow uh, you to configure how Open Aquila encodes your those special characters in your attachment file names. Um, if that sounded confusing, it is a little bit. Um, there's some examples out there and then feel free to reach out if, uh, if it's not making sense. The tool is designed to monitor your file system. You set it up, you make sure it runs, you're not getting um, false negatives, and then you just run it as a cron job, uh, maybe daily, right? And then it will, it will look at the last run it did and the run it just did right so the last two runs it will compare them and it can send you an email if any critical failure happens so it's not just going dark without telling you if you have any attachments that are now resolved right and they went from missing to resolved or if you have new missing attachments so it should allow you to not have to always be checking on the server and being concerned but give you confidence that this tool is kind of watching out for you the end goal is to implement this, uh, this utility as an Open Aquila background task. Um, there's, there's other tasks in Open Aquila that kind of helps check the attachment help with um, the MD5 sum. Uh, this just kind of goes to the next step. Um, until that's implemented and until folks upgrade, if you want to know if all of your file attachments are there, you can use this tool. I recommend running check files weekly and even if you don't have a problem, right? Just it's, it's peace of mind, right? Um, and then daily, if issues start occurring, so you can start to narrow down that 
that root cause, right? And then there's the readme link out to the GitHub repository, again, part of the Open Aquila project. So as we look ahead to 2019.2, uh, this release is going to be in sometime in December. Um, it's, you know, there's on the roadmap, on the community roadmap, it has things from Unicon, things from Edelax, and I'd love to see things, um, issues that other developers want to work on to bring this in um, to, um, you know, to contribute. So there's bug fixes out on the roadmap right now. Uh, like we talked about this LTI REST integration, we'd like to get an MVP out there um, as, as priority allows. Uh, the community is looking at enhancing the taxonomy abilities, uh, sorting in the UI. There's some REST API enhancements happening with it. Uh, continued efforts um, as time allows and as adopters, uh, you know, um, put the resources into it to to take the legacy UI and change it to the new UI. It's quite an effort. Um, some some pretty fantastic abilities have already been added, as you've seen. Right, it's now more of a responsive application, but there's still some areas that need need some work. Uh, attachment health efforts, we should be able to see some of the things that we talked about, like a better audit logging trail and whatnot, um, to be in this next release. Uh, duplicate attachment checking, so uh, the, the MD5 sums had not been uh, being handled um, as expected, and so that's being fixed, and so it, there should be an option now in 2019.2 to say, hey, this is a duplicate attachment, do you really want to upload it, right? Or, you know, it might just uh, block you to paste on your configuration. Now this you can do through scripting. I've done it on my, um, my local family's Open Aquila install, um, but it'll be nice to have it part of the code, core code base. Dependencies as they get updated as security fixes are made and um, especially as it hits that security report and we're able to update it, um, that will come into 2019.2. Some of them will can go into 2019.1. The majority will be going into the latest version. Uh, Live AV is um, starting to be sunset in, um, in favor of FFmpeg. And so there's a discussion now going on that um, it needs to be changed in Open Aquila. And how do we change it, right? Do we want it to be just a, a quick configuration change? Do we want to make it more open? So... Um, we can externalize the command, um, but the goal is to have that in, in this next release. And then if you want to look at all the features and bug fix lists, uh, milestone 12, and that is actually the wrong link. So I will change that before we share these slides. Um, but in the Open Aquila uh, repo, um, you can go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, specifically, since this is a, a Unicon open source support uh, briefing, you know, what are we going to do? What are we working to contribute to the community? Um, the, the attachment health check is nearly the top of our priority list. Um, it's, we can't have the content management system losing attachments. Uh, we need to be able to know why, and we need to start working on that root cause. Um, it's, it's a close then second to, um, finish this rebuild of the Blackboard integration. Um, there are several adopters that are kind of in this boat. And so we, um, we recognize that need and we are, we're doing our best to, uh, to fulfill that need to, um, to be able to have them keep using Blackboard as an integration point. Uh, there's a priority backlog as well out there. So if you're an open source support client of Unicon, uh, please let us know what your priorities are and we'll keep working with that in our current priorities. Uh, so you have a say in what goes into um, what Unicon helps with Open Aquila. Um, it seems kind of far down on the list, but we are still tracking it. We want to open source Aquila Sync and have it become open Aquila Sync. As an integration point, there's a lot of value added there. And then as time allows, uh, just taking the legacy UI and bringing it to the new UI. Um, open Aquila is powerful, right? But people take that first look at the legacy UI and they, kind of, they, they can get turned off, right? Um, and we want that first experience to be like, wow, that's pretty cool and then be able to show them, you know, the true power of uh, Open Aquila. For upcoming events, we talked about Aperio in, in the summer, um, and so now we have Educause coming up in 2019 um, that we will have, there's, I, I believe, Edelex and Unicon will be there available to talk about Open Aquila. 
Um, Edel Expo is kind of the, the user conference for Edelax that happens in Australia, and that'll be around the Thanksgiving time. Our next briefing will be uh, tentatively April 9th of next year. Same kind of format, it'll be a web call. And then Open Aperio 2020, uh, the format's changing. Uh, they're going, they're, they're recognizing that we need to make it kind of a leaner conference um, in terms of the resources you have to um, uh, commit for people to go. So it's going to be hosted at the University of Michigan. Uh, the, the format is changing. So more people will be um, seeing the presentations given. Um, the presentations might be smaller. It's still in play, um, but um, the goal is to have Open Quella be part of that as well. So just kind of the, the, the general slide, if you are interested in Open Aquila, if you want to get involved with it, this is how you get in contact with the community. Um, the Slack channel really doesn't get used all that much, and there's issues with, um, with having a certain number of email domains be available for it, um, but the Google groups are available, um, issue tickets, and then um, this community artifacts site's pretty cool. If you have something you want to share and you're willing to make it public domain, Edelax has, um, has graciously offered to um, host an open Aquila install, but that it's for the community, right? They, they don't own it. It's not just for, you know, their user group. Um, it's for anyone to come and share, hey, I did this cool thing with open Aquila. And with that, uh, we have about 17 minutes left in our time slot, and we'll go ahead and open it up for any questions. All right, I'm not seeing anything on the chat. If another question does come up, um, feel free to contact uh, me directly or um, send a note out to the user group, uh, questions around the check files or upgrading to 2019.1. Appreciate your time. We'll talk to you guys online.